Hi, I'm your host, Dee Dee Che. Audio Builders TV presents Effects Pedals with Adam Brilla. Adam has over 1,000 pedals in his collection. Through his business, Stompbox Sonic, Adam offers personal consultations to help his customers navigate all those switches and blinking lights so they can bring their music to life. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Conquer Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and subscribe to our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Audio Builders Workshop is a work group for the Boston chapter of the Audio Engineering Society. Uh, Stompbox Sonic started um, it kind of an, an outgrowth of many years of playing guitar in bands and um, you know the quest for for new and interesting gear or ways of expressing a musical idea and um, you know traveling around the country and you know finding things whether it's some obscure piece of gear from from days gone by or um, something a local builder was making and selling locally um, you know, just trying different things out, and um, you know, one of the things I would always come back home and be like, oh, "I wish there was more stuff like this." Yeah, yeah. Um, and then also, you know, I'd buy something I'm like, "Oh my God, this fuzz pedal sounds amazing, and it's got this cool graphic on it, and blah blah blah." And then get it home and realize I already have a pedal that sounds kind of like that. Yeah. Um, darn. Um, and then as the you know playing and touring wound down, uh, people would you know, seek out advice um, or want to borrow something or, you know, I'd sell off extras of something I had. Mm -hmm. um, but it always st stuck with me, that idea of, you know, you go into a music store um, and it wasn't always conducive to, you know, there's a lot of other people trying stuff out. Um, and maybe you want something new, but you don't know what it is yeah. and you want to just spend some time trying things out. and. Um, so I tried to come at it through the approach of not only having a lot of interesting things that you might not find mm -hmm. um, everywhere, um, but also putting the musician and the artist more in the forefront. So, you know, what is it that, what's the sound that you're looking for and how do we achieve that instead of, you know, here's this thing and it costs this much right. and are you going to buy it or what because, yeah, yeah. you know, I got another customer over here. Yeah. Um, so we do more consultation-based, um, uh, just more consultation-based rather than traditional, like just cut and dry sales. Mm -hmm. So musicians will set up an appointment and either come to our space, uh, we'll make house calls for touring musicians to, mm -hmm. to sound checks, or we'll go into the studio and, and help bands or recording engineers, you know, demo a few different things. Mm -hmm. So you found this, find the thing that you sure. that you're looking for. Um, also, if you, um, you know, if there's a song or a particular band that you really like and you're like, how do I, yeah. how do I achieve that on this budget? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's, well, if your budget's $50 and you want to yeah, sound yeah, like yeah. my buddy Valentine, right. we Some may or may not be able to get you there. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, get creative um, and not only say, okay, well, is it the exact sound or is there something in that sound mm -hmm that you want right. to, you know, that you're ins inspired by sure. and go from there. So what, if, at this, this, this might be a little bit of a stretch, but like, what is the most, what is the most, how do I phrase this, what's the most challenging sound, or what sound is the most challenging that you've ever had to recreate? What took you the longest time to figure it out? Um, there's, there's been a few few challenges um Just like sounds that were really elusive kind of yeah and sometimes it's really it depends on on the person they may have a very um especially if you're going for a recorded sound sure. and one of the things can one of the challenges can be is making sure we're on the same page of you know if a band is you know has like 30 guitar tracks and they've yeah. You know, they've got, they're using a Mesa Boogie and, mm -hmm. a, and a Fender Twin and sure. they're like a 12 string and it's all these layers right, and it's right. like, well, no one pedal is going to do yeah, that. Yeah. So it's like, um, what is it that, that you're trying to get? Um, 
but there are there are definitely some some challenges. I mean, I, I've gotten pretty adept at dialing in the, the shoegaze sound, but yeah, that can yeah. be that can be a little challenge, um, especially because it's as much as it is a certain type of a you know a, a combination of effects. There's a lot of uh, there's sort of a, I feel like an attitude that the player yeah. needs to bring. Right, so right. so if you don't play in that style, yeah. um, the pedals may not get you there. Sure. Um, you know, just just the way that, you know, s something like a Fender Strat, you know, right. um, in four different musicians will, will right. make it sound totally different. Yeah. There's something very unique about that sound, but mm -hmm. it's like, you know, um, all the players are going to bring their own right. identity to it. So sometimes it's, it's as much coaching or trying different pedals as it is to get the musician to think or play slightly different yeah. as well. So how, how many effects pedals do you own? This is, this is a big question. I'm not expecting a, a specific <laughs> number here. But. Well, it's difficult because there's, you know, stuff that I've accumulated over the years sure. that's like my personal yeah. collection, and then there's the, the wider inventory mm -hmm. of, of Stompbox Sonic. But... Um, one of the things when I was starting this out, I sort of had my my rule book of like mm -hmm. um, things that I wanted to, that were important to me to shape the business and my approach to it. And one of the things was um, unless I get specific requests, all of the choices in terms of the pedals that um, that I was going to get were all things that if if it totally failed and I had absolutely no customers and ran out of money and yeah, I was yeah. stuck with all of these pedals, yeah. I wanted to look, be able to look at the shelves and after the initial, oh God, what have I done, right. wears off, be like, oh man, I'm super psyched. Let, yeah. let me try this or play right, this. Right. or uh. So I wanted things to, it, I wanted the inventory to reflect things that I was excited about or, or musicians that I've worked with um, we're excited about so that it's not just well I got a really good deal on this yeah, and yeah. Um, I wanted it to be stuff that I, I believed in or, mm -hmm. or, um, or or made a sound that I I enjoyed or was after or could see myself using mm -hmm. one day um, but uh, yeah I would probably I don't know if I've hit the thousand mark, yeah. but it's but it's it's not too far off. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> all combined. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Um, but yeah, but it's always ebbing and flowing. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, if you are there any pedals that you can think of, or, or just like effect units in general from I don't know, we were talking about like kind of like, like experimental pedals from the sixties or whatever. Mm. Are there any that haven't really been recreated that you would like to see recreated? Are, are there any sounds that you think uh, should be more common in today's kind of music landscape? Yeah, I think, you know, because some of the circuits are a little easier to, to build or adapt than others and components are more readily available for a certain type of effect, um, there tends to be, you know, certain things, there tend to be a lot of people mm -hmm. doing yeah. X or Y, and there are also like trends where kind of right, like, right. okay, well, people were doing this, but now they've got into this. Right, right. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm always interested in, in um, you know, there's, there's definitely favorites from, from back in the day that it's like, oh, I'm surprised no one's... Yeah. Um, done this or you know there probably is someone doing it and yeah, it's just yeah. like you don't hear about it but um but some of the the vintage phasers like the the, the neutron biphase um and roland had um had some phasers in the 70s that were really cool and it's like there are things that get in that mm -hmm. that i think have that feel mm -hmm. or a sound close to it but i don't think they're straight up clones sure. but i also think you know as much as i love those originals um I have a, I, you know, unless my feeling, and it's the same thing with, you know, if you're a musician, is you can be inspired by something, and, you know, I may listen to your band and be like, right. oh, this touches on some yeah. stuff that I love, but I like that you combined sure. maybe some other element that maybe I'm not familiar with that type of music or band, um, or you just put your own spin on it mm -hmm. instead of just being like, all right, let's just, right, right. Let's just copy this, because yeah, it's yeah. like... It works. Yeah, and yeah. it's like... 
I, I think it's the same with effects. Like it's cool to have, like maybe in its, at its core or like the springboard was this big, but I really think there's so much room um, for people to just be creative and put their own spin or come up with something totally new and new and unique. And that's actually what I'm I'm more interested in um, is seeing what people can do yeah. with with um, with the available stuff and like what haven't I heard yet right, or right. or maybe this sound is familiar but there's a new way of interfacing with it or interacting yeah. with it so um, it responds to to playing in sure. different ways. All right, so how do people learn more about Stompbox Sonic? They can go to stompboxsonic.com and we have a you know website. Um, there's links to videos. Uh, we also have Facebook and Instagram and um, if you are a fan of cats, I would lean towards Instagram as the way to follow us. Of course. But, uh, but the others also will get you the information as well. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great.